Good morning, everybody. My name is Bill, and this is Six Round Studio. I promised you something special in my last video. Today, we are out in the wilds of South Carolina at a private gun range, and this is my friend uh, Jeff Ford. Uh, Jeff, um, Jeff owns a media company, Gasoline Media. He has uh, some YouTube channels. He has a rich history in video and publishing, and um it's through the through the media connection that that i met jeff and we've known each other for years now in that first video or in that last video i told you about the grips that i made for a 1911 well it's jeff's 1911 that we made the grips for that was the early days of my youtube channel so they were like the second or third video that i did i was just trying to get my toes wet figure out if this youtube video thing was worth it and the truth is it has been more than worth it because i am turning down work um every week so uh for all of you out there that are asking me to do work for you my apologies but i'm a year out now i've got nothing left for me to give so um and i talked about that in a video a couple couple videos ago but this is my friend Jeff and Jeff would just tell me a little bit about your background your experience and uh, somewhat how we became friends well uh, we met in prison no, just <laughs> uh, Bill and I actually met through my show auto restaurant basically he wrote into me he was surprised that I answered but I try to answer as many of those as I can as our channel has grown, it's gotten harder and harder to do that, but we, yeah. we try to do that now. Uh, my background, as he said, is in media. I started off in advertising as a print designer. Then I moved from that into magazine production as an editor for a couple of car magazines, Mustang Monthly Magazine, Mustang and Ford Magazine. And then from there, things evolved into us running Auto Restamod uh, as a business. So I am now my own boss, so I can come out here and do these kind of things <laughs> on a work day. In a secret private range. Yeah, in a secret <laughs> private range somewhere in the wilds of South, South Carolina. South yeah. Carolina. Uh, and I'm a, I am not a lifelong shooter. I've been shooting probably since I was a young kid, and I'm still terrible at it, and I don't care. <laughs> I love to shoot. I'm just not a great shooter. Uh, I've always been drawn to 45 ACP, have shot those for years, did some light combat shooting uh, when it was still called combat shooting back in the day. You know, back before mobile phones and all that kind of stuff in Houston, Texas. So, um, so yeah. a lot of my friends are in the shooting community as well. Some of you guys may watch both of our channels. I don't know. I'm hoping, if not, if not, after this, that you go and check Jeff's channel out. It's an interesting way that I I, I asked him a question because uh, th through a tragedy, I inherited my brother's uh, 1970 Camaro, which is why I initially. Uh, contacted Jeff because I had a question about uh, doing uh, floor repair. But the thing that really sealed the deal is he was using a drill motor to drill a hole and he takes this battery pack and he goes like this and he says that feels just so good and it's like right then and there I knew Jeff was a gun guy uh, and, and it was more than just a joke because I got the reference and that's that was how that was the lead in to how we ultimately became, I think, very good friends. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I do want to show that 1911 though. I want to show the um, the grips and we'll take some close-ups of that. Right. So uh, I'm going to do some... Uh, Weapon is safe. I am going to do some close-ups, but these grips uh, I actually made for Jeff um, five, six years ago. That's it's again, been a minute. Yeah, yeah, it has been a minute. That, crazy. That's how the channel got started. Um, and I blame the channel on on Jeff be, because if you know, I got another channel where I do Jeeps. Uh, that was really where where the passion started for YouTube. I was going just going to do Jeep videos, and this guy tells me, no, 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 no. You you need to do gun um, gun work because that's been my family's business uh, since 1962. So anyway, I acquiesced. You've been doing that longer than I've been. Alive. Your family has been doing that longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> so um, anyway, he talked me into doing these videos. I did a video uh, on this and did several videos on building these grips. So 
I'm going to show you some close-ups of this here a little bit. I wanted to see how they weathered. Uh, they they weathered really nice. They are really considering those both of those grips got incredibly wet at one point. They've yeah. done marvelously. Yeah. I'm 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 truly truly pleased. I mean, it's got the dings. It should have dings. That tells me that Jeff is using. I don't play nicely with my toys, folks. <laughs> I play with my toys. If All I right. give you something after I'm done with it, you may not be able to use it. <laughs> and yet I trusted him with my Camaro. <laughs> anyway, we're guys. <laughs> we're not done with it yet. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to do some shooting. I'll do some video of Jeff performing at his best. <laughs> And we've also got a couple other guys here that, with permission, I'll get them on uh, camera too. And we're going to shoot these plates because that's what we do. Because they go ping and they, it's a lot of Yeah, yeah, they make noise. And that's the exciting part about it. All right, guys, let's get shooting. For, uh, for him to use if he needed to. So Bill gave me gave that to Dad. That was, Smith or what is that? Huh? That's Smith or what is that? No, that's a Colt. Oh, that that's a Colt. Um, Colt that, agent. Okay. And the holster is original to the gun. He bought this. It still had the back in 1950 whatever. This was a six dollar holster. Yeah. So it was a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but it's got some you know some good wear marks on it. It's. I'm gonna unload it. But it's a, a 50 something era Colt agent. I love the wear marks on the, the tops and sides. I love, the, well, I love the sea wear marks. You know, yeah. you know how I am on that. Um, a gun that has been well, well used. I love it down here because that's rubbing from inside of the holster. Tell me you don't leave these in the holster. I do leave this one in the holster, but it's in, a, in my uh, gun safe. I don't ever leave it out. Well, no, the reason is, is that leather sometimes will begin to, to uh, Leather, leather and steel have a way of interacting with each other. Mm. Leather and brass really have a way of interacting yeah. with each other. So you begin to get um, rust and other kind of things. Yeah, I'm gonna probably. I didn't know that, so I'll take my 45 out. Okay. No. So do you want to shoot me shooting first? Uh, you're already on live. I'm live. Hi everybody. <laughs> I just told you the story of my uncle's 38 special. Okay. Um. Probably, if we can, I want to move over a little bit to, to use these targets in here. Okay. So that, I usually don't shoot underneath the awning here because of the reverb on it. Uh, the noise. The noise. All right, this is my Colt agent. That belo this belonged to my uncle's dad. It was bought around 1958. Don't hold me to that. Bill will probably come onto his channel, on Bill's channel. My <laughs> uncle Bill will probably come on there and tell the whole story. But little Colt agent, been around a while. Uh, I am terrible with this pistol. If I'm gonna miss with anything, I'm gonna miss with this. All right, everybody, this is Jerry. So if you go over to my other channel, Rust the Resurrection, you're gonna see a short video that I produced with his son, Pat, who has an M38 uh, uh, Jeep. So he's restoring that Jeep to, to military um, specifications. So we were over there the other, over uh, to Pat's house, uh, having a pool party, having, um, great food and we also had to work so in order to pay for the food yes, we did we had to work we had to move the jeep and jeep body uh out of its storage location so that pat could work on it 
four so, broke down old men four and one teenager <laughs> that didn't know what he was doing. Yes. Four, what can go wrong? Four broke down old men in sandals. So, <laughs> I did get. Gigged. I was in shorts. I got gigged <laughs> for the sandals. So anyway, this is uh, this is Jerry. Jerry's going to do some shooting for us as well. I've never had so much fun, Jeff, uh, every time I come down here. <laughs> we are a fun bunch to hang out with, aren't we? You, you are, indeed. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is the last shooter, except for me. Yeah, he's going to shoot. Yeah, he says so. This is Jack. Jack is Jeff's uh, father-in-law. There we go. I got it out. You got it out uh, <laughs> Jeff is married to his daughter. Anyway, Jack is another, another long-time shooter, and... When I said uh, to Jeff I needed to get out to the range, Jack said, there ain't no way you're going without me. <laughs> All right, guys, let's see. Uh, let's let Jack shoot. All right. Range is going to be hot, but not yet. All right, guys, so I built the gun. I'm going to shoot it, and I don't shoot enough to be good at this. So it's that carpenter's children have no shoes kind of thing, and we're going to see how well I can handle that 45, and I'm not holding any hopes out for that. And before he had the stroke, about six months before he had the stroke, he started to age pretty quickly. Um, I think he was 90, 94 years old. You know? right. He started right. to age pretty quickly. Like my mother, she was just four days shy of 95. Yeah, that's about almost what my dad was. So anyway, he, uh, he, he would drive my mother nuts. Okay, <laughs> because his big thing was, my dad always looked 15, 20 years younger than he was, okay? And he would make, he would make hay with that. <laughs> okay, especially especially when the pretty women came into the shop. Okay? okay, and he'd say to them, "How old do you think I am?" Oh okay? no! And they would play. He would play this game with them. So we go out to go out to uh, to restaurants. How old do you think I am? And I'd go, "Dad, Dad, nobody cares. I care." <laughs> I go, "All right, Dad." And the other thing he would do is, he, uh, so because he's a former Marine, Marines drank drank uh, famous grouse. Mm. It is the worst scotch you'll ever have. But Dad drank it because that's what Marines drank. Right? So we'd go out to a restaurant, okay, and he take they take the uh, drink orders, and Dad would say, "Yes, ma'am." He says, "I'd like the Marine Corps drink. I'd like famous grouse," and they'd all she'd go, "Well, I've never heard of that." Go check with your bartender. Bartender, she'd come back. The bartender says, "But well, we don't have that. Never heard of it." Well, ling, ling, young lady, you need to get the bartender to get some famous grouse. <laughs> he would do that every time we went out. Young lady, you need to get the bartender to get you some famous grouse. And finally, it got to the point where I'd say, we'd sit down, and the lady would come over. I said, "Dad, please do not ask for famous grouse." Why? I enjoy that. I go, no, that's the point, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a hoot. He was a character. Lo love the old Good. man. Yep. Love the old man. And what, once a year, you still do a shot of... So once a year, famous crowd. We got till it's gone. <laughs> and there's, there's about that much left in the bottle. So I figure I got at least 10, 10 years of one shot. <laughs> Famous grouse. Every every year on his death anniversary. Here's to you, Bob. There you go. <clears throat> Jeff Ford, you are up first. I could use the uh, 
line from Rooster Cogburn. Fill your hands, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I gotta get So this is a Ruger 1911. This is one of the early 1911s back in when Ruger first started building these. Uh, and this one is a Gen 1, very early. Uh, but the grips are the things that, that we're focusing on here. And I did this out of, uh, actually this was a piece of forearm blank for one of the Ruger number ones. And I managed to scoff that up because it had a crack in it, but it didn't matter for the... Um, for the layout of these grips. So I did do a, a book match. I talk about the book match in that first two or three videos that I did about talking about this, um, how I built these grips. Uh, so my, my goal was to come down here and see how they've weathered and they are stunning. So one of the things that I was hoping to see was this wood darken because uh, that's what you hope to have happen, that the, uh, the patina begins to develop on this walnut. And it's certainly done it on these. So that patina comes from, from gripping it, from, from hand oils and salts, uh, which is good. But it also hap helps to bring out the, um, the figure in the wood. So unfortunately, when you first put finish on it, it's light. A lot of people like that. A lot of people like a, a lighter finish. I've had a couple comments on some of my videos that people don't understand why I don't put more finish on the stocks to get it more of a glossy look. I call that the Velvet Elvis look, and I'm not a fan of the Velvet Elvis look. A lot of people are, but it's not my thing. So if you get anything done from me, unless you specify the Velvet Elvis look, you're not going to get it. You're going to get some more traditional amount of wood fill or, or pour filling when you put the finish on. This thing is stunning. It's beautiful. It's weathered fine. Again, it's got a few nicks and dings, which is what I want to see because it tells me that Jeff has been using the um, using the 1911. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this video. This was a lot of fun in this secret range out in the wilds of South Carolina. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We love having you here. Guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Got me in the belly. <laughs> See you guys later.